Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In the last video, I talked about how you can got, get started with GraphQL with Swift UI applications. We did all the setup and we also displayed all the different countries on our screen. So if I go ahead and run the app right now, you will be able to see that we are displaying all the different movies from the country's GraphQL API on our iPhone screen. So let's go ahead and run this and you will have a better idea of how it looks like. So here we go. It's going to run. And eventually it's going to hopefully display all the screen. So there's, these are all the different countries. Perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to select a particular country. Let's say Afghanistan or let's say Albania, Albania or Austria or Australia, whatever, a particular country. And we want to get details of that particular country. So the first thing we need to do is we need to see that how can we do that using GraphQL from the API. So last time we wrote get all countries and if I go ahead and run this is going to return me all the countries. But what kind of a code or GraphQL query that I have to write so I can get country info. So let's go ahead and do that. Query get country info. Now, in the country info, we should be able to pass variables or arguments. This means that when I select USA, United States of America, that will be the country that I'm looking for. But if I select some other country like Australia, then I'm looking for Australia. So it cannot be hard coded, meaning I cannot just say, oh, give me uh, Australia or give me Austria or give me, you know, Great Britain or something like that. So we need to be able to pass in arguments. And the way that you pass argument is by using the dollar symbol and the name of the argument and then the type of the argument. So the type of the argument is in this case is ID. And the exclamation mark over here represents that this is a mandatory argument that you should be passing. Okay, so we're passing code, which is a country code. So for US, it may be US. And with uh, uh, Great Britain, it might be GB. Now we can use country and you can see that in the country we can pass in the code. Now, how do I know that in the country we can pass in the code? If you look at the docs and you look at the country over here, you can see that in this country, right over here, we are able to pass in the code. And if we pass in the code, we'll get a country and each country has all of these different things. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. So how do we pass in the code? We will say code. The argument that you passed in get country info, we're going to pass it further on. And now it's up to us. What do we want to select? So I can go ahead and select name. I can select capital. I can select the emoji of the country. I can even select the states and the name of the states. Now, some of the countries will not have states, but I can if I want to. Okay, so if I run the query right now, it's going to give me a problem because we did not pass in the code. So we need to pass in the code. So if you go at the bottom, you can see something called query variables, and that is going to allow you to inject the actual code. So I can go ahead and pass in code. This is in JSON format. And let's say the code in this case is US. So this value of the code is going to go right there and then pass further on. And there we go. We got United States with all the different states. Now, if I go ahead and pass in GB for Great Britain, I get Great Britain with all the different states. And let's see if I remember any country code, FR for possibly France. So we get France and capital is Paris. It does not really have any states. So it looks like this is working. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Go to my queries.graphql and paste it right there. Perfect. I do still have to build the application so that what will happen when you build the application is that our api.swift is going to automatically get generated and it is going to include the new GraphQL query that I just typed in which was 
this one. So it will have the code, the Swift code, to execute this query. So let's say if I scroll down somewhere, so you can already see that we have a query for get all countries, which is we implemented earlier on. Now, if I scroll down further on, you should be able to see the one, the new query that we wrote right there. And this is the exact query that we wrote. Great, right? So now we can use this approach. So now I can go back to my content view. And let's say that where are we displaying all of these different things? So I believe this is where we are displaying all the country names. If I want to go to a destination, I will simply go ahead and wrap this. Let's see if I can see the canvas. And you can see the canvas whenever you're using GraphQL because of that build step, uh, the Xcode preview doesn't really work as expected. It still works, but it's not as, it works as better or, you know, as before. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap all of this into a navigation link. Navigation link. I can provide a destination and a label. The destination is text, that's fine. And the label, what the user will see, I'm just going to go ahead and put it right there. So this is what the user will see, which is simply the name of the country and the emoji of the country. Now, if I go ahead and refresh it and go ahead and run it, sometimes you'll see that it doesn't really run as expected. It will always say resume on the top. Uh, it should work. Sometimes you have to like build it again. So probably when you're using GraphQL with Xcode Preview, you may end up using your actual simulator by launching it by Command R. But let's go ahead and try it again if it works. Nothing really. I know that it does work. It's just not displaying right now for some reason. There we go. It still says resume, but you can still see the countries. So now we can actually go to a detail view, which is the destination. Great. But what we want to do is when we go to the detail view, we want to go ahead and fetch the details of a particular country. So the text view as our destination is not good. So we need to create a different view. So I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new view. I will call it Swift UI view and we will call it country detail view. In the country detail view, we are going to be passing in the country which we are trying to fetch the actual details. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say let country. So you need to pass in the country which is of type get all countries query dot data dot country. Great. And we can also go ahead and create some sort of a variable that will allow us to hold the country name. So I'm going to go ahead and create a state private var country info. And again, as I mentioned earlier on in the last video, that when you're building an actual application, it will be a good idea to use an MVVM pattern or some sort of a pattern. We're just trying to get familiar with GraphQL, so that's why we are not really doing anything related to that. All right. So over here, we are missing one argument, so let's go ahead and fix this. Let's pass in the country. Get all country query dot data dot country. And well, you can see that over here we have multiple different options of passing country name, emoji, and states. So if you want to pass in, you can say uh, United States and emoji. Well, we're just going to not pass anything. And over here also, I'm just going to refer to like not passing anything. Let's go ahead and see what it's complaining about now. Expected data dot country. I think that is what, oh, it's uh, expecting something else which is get all countries. I think that should be okay, hopefully. Let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Okay, so we have code, which is GraphQL ID, name of the country, USA, emoji, whatever. Okay, 
Great. Now, over here in this page, what we want to do is we want to perform an actual fetch. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and use a vStack. So I have a little bit more flexibility. I can add the two different items to it. And in the vStack on, on a peer, we can take the country and or the country code and we can perform that request. So I can say network dot shared dot Apollo and the network class is the one that we implemented earlier on. And now I can pass in a query, which in this case is get country info and it takes in a code which we can get from country.code. This is going to give us a result and we can perform a switch on the result. So switch result and based on the result of the success or the failure, so let's go ahead and deal with the success, we will get a GraphQL result. And what should we do over here? Well, we can go ahead and say dispatch dispatch queue dot main dot async and we're going to simply assign self dot country info which is of type get country info data dot country equals to the graphql result dot data dot country all right now for the else case which is the failure we will get some sort of an error and you can do whatever with the error I'm, right now i'm just going to go ahead and display it on the console but eventually you can do anything with the error and now we can go ahead and display the actual uh, country name. And this depends like whatever you want to display. So I'm just going to go ahead and possibly display the name of the country, which is like that. You can display the capital of the country also. So, and you can unwrap it a little bit earlier on if you want. And then finally, if you have states, you can also display the states associated with the selected country. Let's go ahead and try to organize a little bit better. There we go. Now we have to go back to our content view and we have to make sure that we are not going to the text view, but we are going to the country detail view and passing in the country, which we already have because we are in a loop. And probably I'm missing a comma or something. There we go. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and resume it and let's see if it picks up our new changes. I'm going to go ahead and run it. You can again see some sort of a problem appears when you're using GraphQL with SufiUI, but here we go. So we can see now, uh, let's go ahead and scroll at the bottom because we know that uh, USA, which is right here, does have states. And there we go, United States, Washington, D.C. is the capital, and these are all the states. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, not every single country has states. So if I go to a different country, you may not see any uh, states over here. So if I go to over here, you can see it's, we don't really have any information about these things. So North Korea and all that stuff, we do have a little bit of information. But uh, for other countries, we sometimes we just don't. So United Kingdom does have states, so it does pull up the states. All right, so it's pretty cool that we were able to do this with uh, GraphQL and Germany has uh, only a few states, so that's pretty cool. Canada, all right, so we were able to display all the different uh, parts of the country. And when you selected a country, we were also able to display the details of that country. So that is really, really good. And that concludes our lesson on GraphQL. Hopefully you have liked it. If you have liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, go ahead and write in the comments. I may be working in the future, I may be working on a new GraphQL course. Uh, nothing is final yet, just still experimenting with GraphQL, but definitely very, very interesting technology. So thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of different courses related to iOS and even Flutter. Uh, I have a brand new course, which is Core Data in iOS. This will get you started with Core Data and you will start building your amazing Core Data applications. If you're interested in SwiftUI, then I have a perfect course. It's a 24 hour long course 
and it covers map integration. It even covers authentication, which is kind of crazy because no other course covers authentication with JSON web tokens. Uh, only my course is covering that stuff, all right? all right? Now, if you want to make more money, then I have a perfect code for you, Passive Income for Developers. If you are a software developer and you want to increase your income, then check out my course, Passive Income for Developers. If you are interested in learning MVVM pattern with SwiftUI, then I have a course which is going to show you how to do that. Apart from that, you can see that I have a lot of different courses, even on Flutter which and Firebase and Flutter applications. So definitely check out those courses. Check out the links to the courses right there in the description. And if you use those links, I get to keep a little bit higher revenue. But uh, thank you so much. And I really hope that you have enjoyed the video.